Good morning and welcome to Fairlawn Avenue United Church on this 14th day of November. It is good to gather from wherever we find ourselves this morning. I'm glad you are here. Our Director of Music, Eleanor Daly, has provided us with a music bulletin alongside this service with music clips. Music is integral to the worship life of Fairlawn Avenue Church voicing what often cannot be said in words only about the mystery of God. So I invite you to scroll down below this video for this link. Let us start the service with an acknowledgement and light. Fairlawn acknowledges the sacred land on which our church building stands. It has been a site of human activity for over 15,000 years. The land is the territory of the Huron-Wendat and Petun First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit River. The territory was the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and Confederacy of the Ojibwe and Allied Nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Today, the meeting place of Toronto is still home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community on this territory. We are also mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. The original nations continue to cry out for justice. As treaty people, we commit to listen, learn and work toward justice and reconciliation. Once there was someone who said such amazing things and did such wonderful things that people began to follow him, but they didn't know who he was. So one day they simply had to ask him and he said, I am the light. May this light, the light of the day's sun, the light of the night's moon, and the light of a candle alone in the dark, remind us of the light of the Holy One, the light that opens our heart and calms our fears, the light that clarifies and emboldens. Amen. Today's theme is the uncovering in which Jesus calls on us in the same way as he did to his disciples to see beyond the words and the rumors of wars and the overwhelming lies that the world often presents to us, to see into what is often hidden, the true meaning of presence in the time we have been given, the uncovering of love and hope and courage for what is our time. I found these beautiful words earlier this week written by Reverend Dr. Marilyn Pagan Banks, who describes herself as a queer womanist freedom fighter, gratefully, though not always gracefully, serving. Let me share them with you. I see you in the fallen leaves, the vivid colors. I see you in the shadows, their soft embrace. Even in the textured ground, you are there. Forgive me for not seeing you in my neighbor. Forgive me for not acknowledging you in me. Forgive me, God of grace. If granted tomorrow, may I love more freely and fully. Amen and amen. Let us listen carefully to the words from Scripture this morning. Our reading today is Paul Mills. Good morning. The scripture reading today is from Mark chapter 13, verses 1 to 8. Mark's gospel ends chapter 12 with the story of Jesus sitting down in the temple opposite the treasury, watching the rich and the poor as they deposit their money. And the widow with her two pennies moves him so much that he calls his disciples over and points out the obvious to them, that the rich were giving out of their abundance but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she has, her whole living. Notice then what happens when they come out of the temple. The disciples 
uh, childlike awe and wonder and Jesus again bringing them down to earth. A second time Jesus sits, this time across from the temple on the Mount of Olives, where Peter and James and John and Andrew approach him with a question. Listen carefully to what he says. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. In this reading, we hear God's voice. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. I've always liked pigs. I like the feel of their thick, bristly skin under the palms of my hands. I like their beady and intelligent eyes. I like how they play and how they love to sleep. And the effect of water and soil turned into mud on a pig is nothing short of spectacular. They have emotions, they are loyal. If you have one living in your house, they can even be house trained. They love fully and marvelously. Our first pig as children was Arnold. He came as a wee squirmy piglet and we adored him. Eventually, we discovered that Arnold was really Arnelda, but loved her nonetheless. She was the first pig we raised and then ate, and that took some adjusting. After that, we would get two every season, and none of the others won our hearts in quite the same way. But I still love pigs. If I had a modern story become holy and scripture-like to go with our reading from Mark today, it would be the one written 70 years ago about a little girl, Fern, who loved a little pig named Wilbur and of Wilbur's dear friend, Charlotte, a large, beautiful, gray spider who lived with Wilbur in the barn. And there was Templeton, the rat, who never did anything for anybody unless he got something out of it. But the heroine of the story really is Charlotte, who saved Wilbur's life four times by cleverly weaving words into her web that changed how people thought of the pig. The first three words were some pig, terrific, and radiant. People came from all over to see Charlotte's webs with words meant to save Wilbur the pig. So let me share with you the second scripture today from E.B. White's very fine Charlotte's Web. In the cool of the evening, when shadows darkened the fairgrounds, Templeton crept from the crate and looked around. Wilbur lay asleep in the straw. Charlotte was building a web. Templeton's keen nose detected many fine smells in the air. The rat was hungry and thirsty. He decided to go exploring. Without saying anything to anybody, he started off. Bring me back a word, Charlotte called after him. I shall be writing tonight for the last time. Templeton kept out of sight. In the tall grass behind the cattle barn, he found a folded newspaper. Inside it were leftovers from somebody's lunch a deviled ham sandwich, a piece of Swiss cheese, part of a hard-boiled egg, and the core of a very wormy apple. The rat crawled in and ate everything. Then he tore a word out of the paper, rolled it up, and started back to Wilbur's pen. Charlotte had her web almost finished when Templeton returned, carrying the newspaper clipping. She had left a space in the middle of the web. 
At this hour, no people were around the pig pen, so the rat and the spider and the pig were by themselves. I hope you brought me a good one, Charlotte said. It's the last word I shall ever write. Here, said Templeton, unrolling the paper. What does it say, asked Charlotte. You'll have to read it for me. It says humble, replied the rat. Humble, said Charlotte. Humble has two meanings. It means not proud, and it means near the ground. That's Wilbur all over. He's not proud, and he's near the ground. The Christian church year begins with Advent and Christmas, begins in the waning weeks of autumn and slams us into winter. I think it's a wonderful kind of wisdom that the church year begins and ends with apocalypse, with stories of chaos and end times and portents of terror. So here we are, two Sundays away from Advent, and there's this story from Mark, where essentially Jesus has just finished sitting for a time in the temple across from the treasury, watching as people come in with gifts oftentimes gifts of money, and he sees this very poor woman who has two coins, her only wealth, and she deposits it. And Jesus has just tried to get his disciples to understand the real extent of her generosity in comparison with many of the people who came into the treasury when they were walking out of the temple and the disciples were suddenly overwhelmed by the grandeur of the buildings, the size of the stones, the gold on the walls. They were truly in awe. And so they mentioned this to their dear friend Jesus. And Jesus uh, replies to their wonder with this very confusing statement. Jesus says, do you see these buildings? Do you really see them? Not one stone will remain all will be thrown down. They are stunned by this. And Jesus goes on to talk in some detail about what those times are going to be like. And Peter, James, John, and Andrew follow Jesus over to the Mount of Olives, which faces the temple, to privately find out from him when these terrible things were going to happen so that they can prepare. Jesus warns them not to be led astray, not to listen to all the doomsayers, the newsmakers, the people who think they are in, know, in the know. Not everyone comes in truth, he says to them. Then the crux of the, of the scripture, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come, for nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. Yes, this will happen, but this is but the beginnings of the birth pangs. He seems to be saying, don't be alarmed when things go sideways and people preach gospels of hatred and fear. Do not give in to terror and threats of chaos. Think carefully. Listen to some more voices. Perceive the truth. Make room for the still small voices that are around you as well as the louder ones. Like Wilbur, be humble and low to the ground. Do not give in to hysteria and hastily put together schemes. Put one foot in front of the other. Face the apocalypse, but face it with heart and honesty and conviction and hope. In 2016, Ariane Mary Brown wrote the following in reference to racial injustice and the Black Lives Matter movement. She wrote, things are not getting worse. They are getting uncovered. We must hold each other tight and continue to pull back the veil. So let us hold each other tight and pull back the veil. 
See, a apocalypse is not just rumors of war and destruction. It's about something quite different as well. It's an unveiling, an uncovering, a discernment of our time and place. It doesn't mean things are all well, of course, but it does mean that we need to listen carefully, discover truth, hold on to hope, and act decisively. So as Advent approaches, we are being asked to understand reality as we've perhaps never understood it before, to uncover truth from hate-mongering, to engage in justice that is life-giving, and be above all kingdom-minded. One writer that uh, I read this week said, as I envision myself in the disciples' place, listening in bewilderment as Jesus pops my spiritual bubbles, here are some of the questions I'm asking. What lies and illusions do I mistake for truth? In what memories, traditions, or comfort zones do I attempt to house God? On what shiny religious edifice do I pin my hopes instead of trusting Jesus, my denomination, my church, my spiritual heritage? Why do I cling to permanence when Jesus invites me to evolve? Am I willing to sit with the fact that things fall apart, things I love, things I built, things I cried and prayed and strived for? Can I embrace a journey of faith that includes rubble, room, and failure? And then these words from Miriam Therese McGillis. It is no accident that we've been born in these times, that we find our lives unfolding now with our particular histories and gifts, our brokenness, our experience, and our wisdom. It is not an accident. In talking about the fate of the earth, we know that its fate is really up for grabs. There are no guarantees as to its future. It is a question of our own critical choices. Perhaps what we need most is a transforming vision, a vision that's deep enough, one that can take us from where we are to a new place, one that opens the future up to hope. More than anything, we must become a people of hope. I really like those words. I don't need to tell you that the times that we are currently living in are frightening and anxious times in a time of pandemic, in a time when uh, the future of the Earth's existence is, is being called into question because of what we have done to the Earth, to the planet, to the soil, to the air. I don't need to tell you that people of faith know that one way of being church is slowly ebbing while glimpses of new ways, new partners, new conversations call out to us. But has it not always been so? History can show us the tears and fears of many other generations who have gone this way before us. And like Wilbur, I personally like the idea of being humble and low to the ground. It allows me to see and hear things that I might never be exposed to us. The Jesus who is my companion was much like that himself. As Advent approaches, may we find ourselves attentive to other voices, receptive to hope, open to the stranger, and a recipient of God's huge and amazing love. Amen. This morning's virtual music offering features Julia Seeger Scott playing the Clarach. The clock is a harp strung with brass wires instead of the usual gut strings. And the piece you will be playing is O'Carolan's Lamentation by the Irish composer Turlock O'Carolan.
To reach out at any time, the Fairlawn community is here as a safe, caring circle of people to connect with. Send an email or ask someone to send it for you to pastoralcare at fairlawnavenueunited.ca. Our greetings newsletter comes out every Thursday. Please visit our website to get an update of happenings and events at Fairlawn that you can be a part of this fall. As many of you will be aware, alongside this online service, Fairline at Fairlawn Avenue is also offering the option of a modified in-person worship service in the sanctuary. You need to register to attend in-person worship by noon on the Friday before the Sunday service. Fairlawn Avenue United Church is joining other North Toronto cluster churches in the neighborhood with its own vaccine mandate. As of November the 21st, 2021, we will require all members of our community of faith entering the church building to be fully vaccinated, two doses, against COVID-19 virus. Please see our newsletter for further details. Please note as well that because we now have in-person and online services, we also have a new time for our coffee chat on Zoom from 4.15 to 5 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. Please join us. Let us now ready ourselves to meet God in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, our creator, you show us the path of life. Bless faithful people from everywhere with humility as they extend compassion to those who have experienced harm and hurt in religious places. Cultivate healthy congregations that tell off and enact your reconciling love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our constant, you love our universe from beginning to end. As the seasons change, protect animals that migrate and hibernate. Bring them safely to a sheltered place and a more abundant season. God, in your mercy hear our prayer. God our ruler, you write your law on human minds and hearts. Give wisdom to all elected leaders and officials to govern with insight and compassion. Make them mindful of the well-being of all people so that your world will flourish. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. God our stronghold, you are present amid disaster. We pray for those affected by natural disasters. Come to the aid of all survivors of earthquakes, famines, floods, hurricanes, and wildfires, and the first responders who support them. Wherever human action or inaction has been the cause, help us to mend our ways. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our helper and our aid, we pray for all who crave the assurance of your loving presence as they experience ill health and its attendant fears. Let us take a few moments to name the people we offer in prayer this morning. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our God, God of the living and the dead, we thank you for the lives of all who rest in your eternal mercy, even as they reside in the memories of human hearts. Assure us of your resurrection promise that together with them we may dwell in your fullness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and our strength, we entrust to you all for whom and which we pray. 
remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our companion. Amen. And these prayers from Janet Morley, Yours is the Kingdom. Let us proclaim our commitment to live, not under the rule of evil, but under the reign of God. We will not live under the rule of evil, where some children die for lack of food. We will live by your kingdom, where you are preparing on this earth a feast for all the poor, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. We will not live under the rule of evil, where some are trapped by debt, in desperate poverty. We will live by your kingdom, where prisoners lose their chains and those who are paralyzed walk free. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. We will not live under the rule of evil, which lays heavy burdens on those who cannot bear them and lifts not a finger to help. We will live by your kingdom, where all who find release will long for others to be free. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the one who visits the local food bank bless us. May the one who walks the streets be our companion. May the one who has no shelter welcome us. May the one whose voice has been lost cause us to speak. And may the one whose kingdom is not of this world be with us in ours. Now let us hold the wonders of the universe and the fragility of our planet together, bound by the hope that does not let go of us, the love of the holy that sustains us, and the ferocity of the spirit that tells the truth of us. Go now in peace. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.